What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Found this video to the most feared NBA players of all time from a YouTuber slash YouTube channel called NBA Tens. All right. Curious to see what this uh, individual or group of people have as their top 10 most feared of all time. If I had to take a guess, players that I think are going to be on this list, general players that tend to make these kinds of lists for this particular category, uh, I expect Larry Bird to be there. I expect Magic Johnson to be there. I expect Michael Jordan to be there. I expect Kobe Bryant to be there. I expect Shaquille O'Neal to be there. That's five. I expect Will Chamberlain to be there. That's six. Ooh, LeBron, Kobe. Shaq, that's six, four more. This is in no particular order for me. I'm just the names that I expect to hear. Um, I said Will. Ooh, maybe, maybe this might be a stretch, but maybe Allen Iverson for number seven. Maybe Kevin Garnett, just because of his very mean and grimacing mentality. And his smack talk and trying to get in people's heads, trying to get him bent out of shape. But also, he was had amazing, amazing skills and abilities to go along with that. Maybe Kevin Garnett. Two more. Probably have to say Dennis Rodman. For, uh, for I don't even have to explain Dennis Rodman. So that's nine that I have. And then... That last slot, I don't know. This I'm thinking of all. I'm thinking like Ron Artest could be it. Uh, Charles Barkley maybe could be on that list. Maybe Willis Reed could be on that list. Ben Wallace maybe. Um, definitely not Draymond Green. Despite what he likes to prop himself up to be. Maybe somebody from the Bad Boy Pistons. The only person I could see people fearing from the Bad Boy. I don't think anybody feared Isaiah Thomas. But maybe Bill Lambert. Just because of all the players on the Pistons. He was the most egregious. At putting people on their ass. And doing cheap shots. So this is being feared for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> uh, you know what? Screw it. Bill Lambert. So what, what, what did I say? Recap. The Trinity, Michael, Larry, Magic, Kobe, Shaq, LeBron, Iverson, Rodman, um, Bill Lambeer, and Kevin Garnett. No particular order. That's my 10. Let's see how it matches up. Let's get into it. Machiavelli once said that it is better to be feared than loved if one cannot be both. Fortunately for these NBA players, they were loved by their teams and feared by many. Welcome to NBA 10s, where we're talking about the most intimidating NBA players. A countdown of the 10 most feared NBA players of all time. They better not have Steph Curry Can't in there. Control of the whole basketball game just by rebounding or blocking shots. Ben Wallace embodies everything that people think about when they think about Pistons basketball. Starting our countdown at number 10 is Ben Wallace, who was a terrifying defender. Despite his six foot nine frame, Wallace's impact was immense, marked by his headband and distinctive fro flowing as he soared for vital blocks and rebounds. A defensive force, he commanded respect and made opponents rethink their strategies. Wallace's determination led to four Defensive Player of the Year awards, bringing his career to a crucial moment the Malice at the Palace incident during a Pacers-Pistons game. This incident highlighted the sport's complexities. Beyond stats, Wallace's legacy reflects his role in prompting reflection and change in basketball. His influence extends beyond the game's tangible aspects, making him a captivating figure in basketball history with an enduring impact. He was a winner. He was a leader. Dennis Rodman put on an absolute rebounding clinic. Best athlete I've, I've ever seen probably in the NBA. 
Number 9. Dennis Rodman Oh boy, where do we even begin with this colorful character? Rodman was more than just a basketball player. He was a living, breathing hurricane of intimidation. Known for his wild hair colors and countless tattoos, Rodman's appearance alone could make opponents uneasy. But it wasn't just about the looks. His defensive prowess was off the charts. He had a knack for getting under his opponent's skin, taunting them and disrupting their game mentality. Rodman's rebounding skills were downright otherworldly, as if he had some secret gravitational pull on the ball. He fearlessly threw his body into the mix, crashing the boards like a man possessed. Offensive players were left baffled and frustrated, wondering how to outwit this basketball wizard. Hey man, he's probably one of the greatest power boys of all time. So. He's one of those guys that you hate playing against, but you'll love to have him on your team. I always look forward to that com uh, competition and that, that energy he brings every night, and we want to do the same. I'm happy I got that KG one. Mmm. Mmm. Culture, just with his actions every day. I don't like KG. Very mean guy. She's where is the There's no love there. There where is the love? Yeah. So you can see already he's frustrating him. Coming in hot at number eight is the one and only Kevin Garnett, the big ticket of intimidation. Garnett was a walking hurricane on the court with a fierce intensity that left opponents trembling in their basketball shoes. Standing at 6'11", Garnett was a force of nature in the paint. His trash-talking game was second to none, and he wasn't afraid to get in his opponent's faces and let them know who was in charge. He had a fire burning inside him that fueled his every move, from monster dunks to lockdown defense. Garnett's passion and aggression were contagious. Lifting his teammates and electrifying the crowd, he could change the momentum of a game with a single play and would do whatever it took to secure the victory. He was also known for his unique intimidation tactics that would always make you do a double take. Whether it was his signature chest thumping or his relentless pursuit of greatness, Garnett left an indelible mark in the NBA as one of its most intimidating and captivating players. The bad boys were just no joke. They were an elite team. They were so physically and mentally tough and Ooh. so competitive. With dependable, I got Bill reliable, showed up every night to play. I thought it was a stretch. Two of the fan favorites. Oh, I hated him. And yeah, he carries even to this day. They made it personal. They, they physically beat the shit out of us. At number seven, we have not one, but two intimidating forces from the same team, mm -hmm. Rick Mahorn and oh. Bill Lambeer. The dynamic duo behind okay. the infamous Bad Boy Pistons. These two bruising big men were the architects of one of the most feared and physical teams in NBA history. Mahorn and Lame Beer were masters of the art of intimidation, using their imposing presence and no-nonsense style of play to strike fear into the hearts of their opponents. They didn't mind getting physical and were notorious for their hard fouls and rugged defense. Together, they formed the backbone of a team that embraced the bad boy image, and they relished it. They were the enforcers, the guys you didn't want to mess with, and they wore that reputation like a badge of honor. You see, the bad boy Pistons were a force to be reckoned with, and Mahorn and Lame Beer were the architects of that gritty, no-holds-barred mentality. And their legacy lives on as a testament to the power of intimidation on the basketball court. He's the coldest dude I ever seen with that shit, man. Everybody be talking about these great greats. They don't be always mentioning him. He was the shit. Yeah. The shit, man. He'll give it to you any way he wanted Larry to. Larry Bird. No one knew it. Not Larry Bird. I've seen the interview before. Be keep it close, and he has a chance to win it. He's going to win it. But Larry Bird would put fear in me and everyone else just like Luca does. And, I, and I, I watched him going, man, this dude is every move uh, Kevin M uh, McHale's ever had plus, mm. and he can put the ball in the basket. At number six, Larry Bird, the hick from French Lick who could strike fear into his opponents with just a single glance. Now, you might be wondering how a guy known for his sweet shooting stroke and smooth skills could be intimidating. Well, let me tell you, Bird was a cold-blooded assassin on the court. His competitiveness was unparalleled, and he had a killer instinct that made him a nightmare to defend against. Outside of serving up on the court, Larry Legend was also infamous for his trash talk. 
One of the best examples in NBA history of trash talk was during All-Star Weekend in 1986. Bird was participating in the three-point shootout. Not only did Bird show up late to the pre-contest meeting, he decided to break the ice with four bone-chilling words. Who's coming in second? <laughs> Bird's basketball IQ was off the charts, and he would pick apart defenses with surgical precision. He had an uncanny ability to read the game, making him one step ahead of his opponents at all times. He affects them in a profoundly negative fashion, completely demoralizes them and strips their heart right out of their chest every time he goes up against them in the postseason. Well, he, he's terrifying. Yeah, you know, he really is. Every time he comes down the court, getting downhill, you just know he's either going to get to the rim or he's going to find one of his shooters uh, for a three-point shot. Uh, but just how tough he is to game plan against and play against. Do you realize the greatness of LeBron, LeBron James? At number five, the king. Yep, you got that right. It's LeBron James, where his combination of size, speed, and skill is enough to give any opponent nightmares before facing him on the court. Standing at six foot nine and weighing in like a freight train, LeBron is a force to be reckoned with. Now, some of you may be sitting there thinking, LeBron? Intimidating? No way! But what makes LeBron truly intimidating is his ability to do it all. He can score at will, pass like a wizard, and defend like a tenacious bulldog. Facing him on a fast break is like trying to stop a runaway locomotive. But it's not just his physical competence that strikes fear into his opponent's hearts. LeBron's basketball IQ is off the charts, and his ability to read the game and make the right play at the right time is downright scary. Fear the capability of what they were... I mean, you, you fear what they were capable of. So I think LeBron's probably a, too high on this list. I don't think, like, generally most people feared LeBron, but there were moments and certain players particularly that I did think fear LeBron because when they would come up against them in games or finals especially in key moments of the game they didn't play the same way they were playing or as good as they should have played uh in in certain moments so i like i can't think of anybody off the top of my head right now but i'm like i could tell and the, even in the fast break the chase down block i've seen people legitimately fumble the ball because they hear lebron james phantom footsteps coming to block the shot or or not finish it like they should, or instead of just trying to make the play, worrying about not getting blocked, things like that. So I think something has to be said for that. But I think LeBron's definitely don't think LeBron James um, was more feared than Larry Bird. That's for damn sure. Or Kevin Garnett, to be honest. That's where fear comes from. Like playing against a grizzly bear. And if anything, any fear, any fear in you that shows, he's going to expose it. Locked in. The man come down. You remember he came, shot fake, shot fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you on? <laughs> At number four, we pay tribute to the Black Mamba himself, Kobe Bryant. Kobe's relentless work ethic and Mamba mentality made him one of the most intimidating players to ever lace up sneakers. He had a killer instinct that struck fear into the hearts of his opponents. Kobe's footwork was poetry in motion, and his scoring ability was simply unmatched. When the game was on the line, you could bet that the ball would find its way into Kobe's hands, and he'd deliver with a cold-blooded shot that left defenders helpless. But what made Kobe truly intimidating was his unwavering confidence. He welcomed the pressure, thrived in it, and often turned it to his advantage. He had that special ability to enter a zone where nothing else mattered except winning. His competitive fire burned brighter than most, and it didn't matter who you were. Kobe was coming for you. One of the most dominant forces we ever had in our game, along with Shaq. Uh, one of the greatest Lakers that ever played a game. Will Chamberlain. If I had that one on my resume, that's a, that's a big one. I always hear Will Chamberlain, so he's always there. So. He's a legend. On to me. Are you got Will Chamberlain? At number three, well, it's the legendary Wilt Chamberlain, Big a dipper. towering figure in NBA history. Wilt was a basketball giant in every sense of the word, standing at an astonishing seven foot one and dominating the game like no one else before him. His sheer size and athleticism were enough to intimidate any opponent. He was a scoring machine, known for his unstoppable moves around the rim and his astonishing ability to grab rebounds. 
Wilt once famously scored 100 points in a single game, a feat that still stands as one of the most awe-inspiring records in sports. What made Wilt even more intimidating was his larger-than-life persona off the court. He was a true showman, boasting about his feats and backing up his words with jaw-dropping performances. Like the league be kind of fearful of a player or have that much reverence for a player, no matter who you, who, you know, has come since then, you know, that was a different feeling when you're playing Mike because you just knew, you know, like there was, there was such a seriousness and competitiveness and fire in him and... You know, there was a fear with how that was going to manifest itself. You know what? So it's a statute of limitation. And well. Orlando well, they got Michael Jordan now, which means they got two people ahead of Mike. So obviously one of them is Shaq. And I can understand the reasons for Shaq. At least for centers. But who... who they can't have... Is that, I'm guessing Magic Johnson ahead of Jordan? And I won the game in overtime. What? The statute of limitations up. I was terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. You just got a MJ? Yeah. You gave For him how long? For how long? Right when you took the floor? Oh, the whole game. Maybe the top player of all time. He just stands apart from every player I've ever seen. Michael was a great player, and I just tried to do the best I could against him. And Michael Jordan, it's almost like a god. Michael Jordan. Not Michael Jordan. Number two on our countdown, the one and only oh. Michael Jordan. And My bad, we were at number two. I'm tripping. Thought we were, thought we were at number three. Oh, huh, no, yeah. Will was number three. My bad, my bad, y'all. My bad. Lost track of things. So, I'm guessing Shaq is number one. Jay, Air Jordan, the GOAT, whatever you want to call him, his name alone was enough to strike terror into the hearts of his opponents. Michael Jordan's competitive drive was unparalleled. He had that uncanny ability to elevate his game in the most crucial moments, hitting game-winning shots as if it was just another day at the office. His killer instinct and desire to win at all costs were the stuff of legends. Not only was he a scoring machine, but he was also a defensive stalwart. His tenacious defense made it nearly impossible for his opponents to get a clean shot off. He would hound them relentlessly, making them second-guess every move they made. Whether it was soaring through the air for a gravity-defying dunk or locking down his man on defense, Jordan was a true force of nature on the basketball court. I didn't have to garden very much, uh, but the very few times that I did, it was uh, painful. He played with such a viciousness. I uh, watched him put centers to shame. I think of my lifetime, probably the most dominant basketball player I've ever seen. Shaquille O'Neal at 325, 350 pounds is the most dominant force I have ever seen on a basketball court. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the undisputed king of intimidation on the NBA court, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq was an absolute behemoth, standing at a towering 7'1 and weighing in like a freight train. When he stepped onto the court, he brought a whole new meaning to the term domination. Shaq's powerful dunks and thunderous slams were enough to make any defender shudder in fear. He was a force of nature in the paint, bulldozing his way through double and triple teams with ease. Once he had the ball down low, there was no stopping him. Defending Shaq was a nightmare for opponents. They would bounce off him like pinballs as he muscled his way to the basket. And if you tried to foul him to stop him, well, good luck. The hack-a-shack strategy was born out of sheer desperation. Off the court, Shaq's charismatic personality made him a lovable giant. But on the hardwood, he was a force to be reckoned with. He was the epitome of intimidation, and that's why he takes the crown as the most intimidating NBA player of all time. Yeah, I... I, I understand the Shaq being number one just because of his... Especially during his prime of his size and power and athleticism like he especially for centers and power forwards that had to deal with him directly and even the small forwards when they'd come up to triple teams sometimes quadruple team him, and he was just flinging people off of him i could understand having to deal with the, the brutality of shaquille o'neal whatnot uh but 
I, I could say maybe during that time of his prime of those, you know, his, his physique and all that, probably most dominant. But I think all players feared Mike. One through five consistently because <laughs> they're having to deal, deal, deal with Jordan. I, I, I'd have to put Mike... Had a shack, me personally, but I understand the angle for Shaquille O'Neal, though. Like, I can understand it. But I, I, I think I'd have to put Mike number one. So many people have heard so much testimony of people just all positions, one through five. Jordan scared me. Especially players coming in when Michael Jordan had already established himself. They looked up to this guy like he was some type of mythical figure. It was like, I can't believe I'm on court with this guy. This is scary. Larry Bird should be higher on that list, too. I've heard nothing but stories where it's like, yeah, we are scared of what Larry Bird can do, so shut your mouth. Don't get into a smack talk session with him. Don't get him wired up because he doesn't need it. Anywho, y'all let me know what you think about it. How would you rank these players? And if you think there's a player that should have been on this list that wasn't and was omitted, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.